I need five players of you with the ball at the left back position here. I need uh, five players of you without the ball at the right back position here. And I need all the other five players here at the other side, uh, at the center back position with the ball, please. One goalkeeper here and one goalkeeper at the other side. Uh, you always change uh, when I make a break, okay? Just go back a little bit. That's fine. So the first exercise is called double shot. Uh, you don't need a ball at the right uh, back position. Later you will need it. Please put it out of the field because we have to run a little bit. Come a little closer and I show. We start watching the goal, playing a parallel thrust, running back and Running like this, that you can shoot from nine meters between those two floor markers, like this. And you get my ball from here, take it. Q here, uh, do it please. And after the shot, I run to the other side. And when I cross the middle line, you go into this direction and give me a pass from the yellow uh, alley here like this. Then I'm allowed to do one dribbling and shoot a goal. So we have got two different positions. Backcourt position here and counter attack here. Now, you go without the ball to the right back position. I take the ball from my own shot and cue behind you. Okay? I'll help you a little bit at the first. Ball is here. Give me the ball. You go to the right back position. I'll help you in the start. Come a little closer, then it's way easier. Go. Pass back. Shoot. Run the curve to the other side. You get the ball from beside the goal. And the next one. You have to take the ball beside the goal. Let's go. Let's go. One. You go to the other side. You take her ball and cue at the left back position. So it's always shooting from the left back position, getting the pass from the right position and shooting on the other side. Exactly. You take the ball behind the left back position. Stop. Goalkeepers, please change. Uh, right back and left back change positions. Now the right back uh, goes on this side and the left back on the other side. You stay. So balls here. Exactly. Same thing. You move to the goal. Run free big at the back. Shoot from here. And now you can change between jump shots, floor shots, shots at the hip position, for example. And again, you get my ball, you cue with the ball on the other side. And after the shot, the shooter runs on the other side, <coughs> comes here, 
outside of uh, the left back. And whenever you cross the middle line, you get the pass here and try to shoot the goal without dribbling. So you should uh, catch the ball at about nine and a half or nine meters here. Then you go to the left back position. I take my ball and cue behind this position. And uh, like before, we shoot free for all goalkeepers because they are already warmed up. Let's go. Ja, ja. Pass quality. Stop. Goalkeepers change again. Uh, ball players and not ball players change again. So we start with the ball from this side. Um, we make the same exercise, but just with a crossing. So you get the ball from her, give her the pass. You can do one dribbling if you want. If, if you don't want, do it without the dribbling. And you make a running fake outside, like this. Then you come inside. Then you play the crossing for her, here. And she is not allowed to dribble. So the pass must be really good. And you should uh, shoot in the corridor here of the basketball zone, so inside the two orange uh, cones or the two orange floor markers here. So here. Timing must be good. The changing is the same thing. So after the shot, you go on the other side again. You take uh, the two yellow floor markers to the right back position, please. Can you take the two floor markers to the right back position? We make the distance a little bit longer. Here, that's fine, that's fine. A little bit, yeah, 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 that's fine. You go there, please. And after you make the shot after the crossing, you come outside here, and the pass here is a little bit longer. Uh, the player who runs for the fast break should at least dribble once, or she should not dribble at all. So a uh, good pass here, and uh, you should shoot from about seven meters here. And here is the backcourt position, here is the fast break position. So just with the crossing from the right back to the left back. Exactly. 
and you get her ball and cue here. But there, there are enough, so. Good. And after the shot, go to the other side. Pass quality. Two hands. Stop. Goalkeepers change side as well, again. Uh, and ball keepers and not ball keepers also change side on the other side. Now, the same thing, uh, left back crosses for the right back, shoot uh, in the middle. Uh, and it's always like, uh, can I? if you pass the bear pass here, running fake on the outside, come inside here, and try not to dribble. So shoot from the nine meters, we need it for the next step, uh, and uh, make especially uh, jump shots. On the other side, the same thing, but thank you. Uh, please put it on the left back position that the pass is gonna get longer. Thank you. Let's go. Stop, uh, change sides, goalkeepers change also sides as well. I need one defense player, please. Thank you. Can you stand at the center back position, please? Very defensively, just between those two floor markers, and your job is just blocking, okay? okay? 
But no offensive block always stands behind the 7 meter line, so between 7 and 6 meters. So, uh, ball keepers here, not ball keepers on the other side. And now it's always right back makes a crossing for the left back and you try to shoot uh, over the block or beside the block and the goalkeeper has the help of the defense player. She is just allowed to move out until seven meters, so it's a defensive block what we are uh, doing now and she's trying to help uh, the goalkeeper now. After 10 times, you say change, and then somebody else comes to the defense, okay? The rest of the exercise is the same. Wait here. You can, you can give that uh, to the middle position. That's fine. I just wanted to show some variations. Yeah, thank you, that's fine. So whenever uh, you made the shot, you go to the other side, you get the ball from the middle, try not to dribble, this is the additional exercise, and this is the main exercise, what we are doing right now. Everything clear? Let's go, girls! Elbow, elbow. Nice. Have you got 10? Okay. Stop. Uh, change the defense. Goalkeepers, change the sides, please. And we do it from the same side, so crossing. Uh, just walk out until 7 maximum. And this is defensive walking now. Let's go. Nice shot.
please go drink something. I'm going to talk to the coaches and then come back to the middle for the next exercise. I strongly believe in uh, complex training. This is uh, one of the things I really like in my training sessions to do, uh, or not to do multitasking, but to work with uh, several ideas. So my main idea was on this side, backcourt shooting with the help of a defense player, this time with defensive blocking. And on the other side, fast break. It also gives me the chance to watch the players, for example, to get an idea of their quality, and I think they are very good. Uh, and what I saw is uh, that, or what I learned in my training sessions is, it is also good for the goalkeepers to have different tasks in one session. But this was the main task here, and this was, let's call it, the side task. What I also want to do is, I want to go from the easy things to the difficult things for the players. So whenever I do shooting training with a team, I also think it is an important training session for the field players as well, because I need their concentration and I need their focus. Have you got any questions to that exercise? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. So, uh, especially at the wing and the wing position. But this I don't generally do in the shooting training, but I do it in the one-on-one -on -one training. Mm -hmm. So this is the technical focus, but this is also the focus for me as a coach to judge uh, what is the quality of the players. But this is, uh, as I said, uh, the second part when I do the individual training and I watch uh, the focus. But thanks for the for the thing. Okay, so please uh, go to the wing positions now. Everybody has a ball, but three players don't have a ball. This is the right back, the center back, and the left back. And both goalkeepers go to this side, please. Um, uh, all the wing players start from the line position, please. So come uh, to the space where the uh, nine meter line crosses the sideline. You start here. We need just one player at the right back, one player at the middle back, and one player at the left back. And you don't have to uh, use the ball. You can put the ball on the side. Yeah, that's fine. And now uh, we shoot after three passes. It's like, first pass to the left back, and you run behind the left back, you pass to the middle back, run behind her, behind her, exactly. You pass to the right back, and you shoot from the nine meter area, and I block. You are the next blocker on the other side. So you shoot it first, and then you block for the next uh, uh, person because then it starts with you, go to the right back, go to the, uh, uh, pass to the, uh, you, you pass to the right back, you change behind the right back, uh, you are the next middle player, and I'll help you a little bit, okay? So start on the other side. Yeah, give her the ball. And we always work once from the left side and once from the right side, and after you have blocked, you cue here and on the other side. 
no, no, I, I help you. You go to the middle. Let's go. And you go to the right. You get the ball from the wing. You pass to the left. And here is the next defense player. Now you are the next defense player here after the shot. You pass the first pass, second pass, and you shoot over the block. And you are the knight, exactly. And you are the next defense player. You are the next defense player. Good. That was your ball. Now you shoot. Good block. And you are the next block player on the other side. Exactly. Good. You can change after 10. Yeah. Good. Good. Good, that was your ball. Very good. Good. Good job. That was your side. Good. And show arms, defense. Stop now. Now try, please, just with jump shots from around nine meters. Defense players act at six meters so that we have got the situation. Uh, jump shot decision uh, here and a block decision here and a goalkeeper decision here. So just jump shots, okay? Start from the left wing position, please. You go to the left side, you get the ball from the left wing. Good. That was yours. Good.
Gut. Stay. Good. That was nice. They come. Good. Good. Be careful, there is a ball, that's fine. Last shot. Okay, F please make a break. Goalkeepers then come to me here. Field players, you can rest a little bit outside. I just work with the goalkeepers for the end of this session now. So now before I start with the individual work, I tell you what I did behind the goal and beside the goal. This was exactly the time when I could give them feedback. So uh, my dream situation in the training session would be that I have got a head coach uh, who is responsible for the exercises for the field players and me as the assistant coach or right now I work as a goalkeeper coach for my club uh, this is an Austrian club, Krems 
uh, and he gives always feedback for the back position, uh, for, for the goalkeeper position. I believe, and I talk about it a little bit longer in the theory tomorrow, uh, in the theoretical session, I think it is also important for the goalkeeper to live without the help of the defense players. Because this is often the case. So sometimes you get shots from 9 or 10 meters and there are no hands, there is no help. So I have the feeling that this also needs to take a place in the training session. Because, of course, the defense players try a lot and want to block and want to attack, but sometimes the timing does not fit. And this is, in my opinion, a very important issue for the goalkeeper in the training session, because in the match there are often situations, at least in my team, where there is no help for the goalkeepers. To be honest, and I work a lot with videos, uh, I, o I often uh, misjudge the situation. So, uh, I would uh, sometimes, after the game, normally I do the analysis and the evaluation always immediately after the game, because then I remember the situations better as if I did it like days afterwards. And uh, it has been two or three times that I had the complete different opinion about the situation. So the situation, for example, that the goalkeeper has got his side, but he, uh, he did not have his side because there was no block. When I evaluate something now in the training session, uh, because this was especially about backcourt uh, saving, then I evaluate it and put it out into the, uh, let's call it one-on-one -on -one situation, and I show you, or oh, let's in this case one on two situation because we have got two goalkeepers, completely different goalkeepers, and uh, we, uh, I work with them alone, without a team. And uh, the example would be uh, if they had problems uh, with shots on the high position or on the low position because this is what we're gonna exercise now. What I do is uh, I simulate two goals can you come to uh, this goal position, uh, to this goal position here? A little bit in front, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. So this is your left post and this is your right post. And you come to the other side, please. This is also the right post and this is the left post and UQ in the middle. I'm gonna show you cards and uh, you have to imagine that you uh, save a ball high, so like this or like this, can be on this side or on the other side, depending on my cards, okay? If there is uh, a number here, don't matter, it uh, doesn't have any effect now uh, for this exercise. So, go into the basic position. And you go there, and you go back to the middle, exactly. So always go to the center. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And now, uh, imagine there is the post. So if there is the post, you must not touch it. So please be aware, it is good if you show with the toes outside. So if it was uh, in the goal, I would say the toes should point outside from this position. You know what I mean? If I stand here, I'll show you. If I make a save on this side, then the toes should uh, face here from the uh, point between the nine meter line and the sideline to here. So it is always uh, a, a taste question if it should be more like this or like this. But there shouldn't be one thing which is, in my opinion, very important. There shouldn't be this. Because if the toe shows to the audience right now, you have a problem if you want to save uh, a ball which is a little bit low. And <clears throat> so this is always the starting position on this side and this is always the starting position on the other side. Okay. So 
don't only uh, make the right move, also go back immediately as fast as you can, okay? Be careful, you hurt yourself. Make the border here. Here, don't touch, because there is the post, okay? Let's go. You the same. Be careful, you are on the post. Okay, we need to go to the goal. Uh, can you take the cards, please? And switch always uh, every 10 actions, okay? So one if you start. And stand like if you stand in the goal normally. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Try to stand inside. So whenever you save, try make a border here and don't get here because you have to save only inside. Okay, that was much better. Good. Okay, next please. Good. Good. Okay, come here. And now, uh, please make a safe low on this side and low on the other side. Okay. Good. Good. Good hand. Good. And change. Very nice move. Other side. Oop. And now. Okay. Change again. Uh, now we go uh, down and I tell you the color so it is pink white and orange and green on this side and you always start from the middle line please uh, go a little bit back yeah and try to work to the front so that you touch here that you come yeah like this exactly that was super okay that's nice orange green orange pink White, orange, pink, white, green, orange, and change please. Very good moves. Orange, pink, white, orange, white, pink, orange. Orange, green, white. Okay, change. Now I tell you the side where you do not have to go. So whenever I say green, you must go to the other side. Whenever I say pink, you know it's the other side. So always think in the different direction. Everything clear? Pink. And you go, you go down. Yeah, yeah. Orange, very good. Green, orange, white, orange, white, green, white, pink, 
Good. Change? Always think on the other side. Orange. White. Orange. Green. Orange. White. White. Pink. Green. Orange. White. OK, that's fine. Good. Can you give me the cards? Thank you. Bring something. So what I did now is I tried to extract uh, the uh, tasks for the goalkeepers into a separated exercise. And what I use is normally uh, those uh, color cards. Uh, it is a laminated paper, uh, just a color paper, uh, where you have to act in this direction. There is one thing, you should not step on it, because then you could easily slip. And I also uh, developed a few exercises with numbers. This is not a big deal here. So it's just um, an idea where I think uh, it is good to bring something new for the goalkeepers. So you saw that also the information uh, I gave was once auditive, then at the second position, visual information. And this is also something which I think is very important for them that they get different kinds of information uh, for, their, uh, for their moves. What I could see is two completely different technically educated uh, types of goalkeepers where uh, lots of the moves are already in an automatic mode. So you saw the one goalkeeper who is a little bit smaller who uh, has got jumping power, for example, and you saw the goalkeeper who is uh, a little bit taller, uh, who has a good um, timing uh, for uh, the moves, especially on the low post position. Okay, you do it like this, yeah. but please touch uh, the thumb like this, because then it can't fall down. You get two, and you get two. Um, stand in front of me, like here, facing each other. And stand like a goalkeeper. And you have got to pass the ball to the other side. And the ball is allowed to touch the floor once. Yeah? But really smooth, because this is a very fast ball. OK. And you can go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Difficult thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ball is allowed to touch the floor once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the. Try it, please. Yeah, yeah. And it is completely OK if the ball touches the floor once. It is just for learning. You see, which is a little bit unfair for me, is because the girls have never trained with this before. And they, they are learning it. And you would see, if they did it for 15 minutes, it is no problem. I have this idea from Matthias Andersson. Uh, who uh, developed this hit ball training, which comes from badminton, actually. And there is one methodical mistake which I now make with the girls, because this training is more difficult than normal training, because the ball is much smaller. And uh, what I do uh, normally is, with my goalkeepers uh, from the main, they stand uh, in a position when you have the ball here, they stand facing each other like this, and they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And their record now is 1,004. But they really do it every week with me in the training. So uh, they, I bet 
if they do it for uh, 15 minutes or for 30 minutes, try, try, because I'm talking about you, that you can do it really nicely. So this is the first step, that the ball is allowed to uh, touch the floor once. The next step would be that they uh, play the ball directly, always with left or right, and there is only just one thing which is important for you if you use that. So you can order it on uh, Matthias Andersson's homepage, he's in the internet, and look at my thumb, you have to put the thumb here, because what happens is, if you do it like this, then it always falls to the floor and it is difficult. But what I do is, I put them in this position and I like them to do the short moves on the left side and on the right side. And this is for me an, a very important uh, technical issue, especially, see, that can happen. That can happen if you don't have uh, the thumb here, uh, especially for watching the, goal, uh, the ball and there is one important thing, in my opinion, for charging the speed of the ball. Um, I think uh, Matthias Andersson has it from Mats Olsson, because the yellow balls, they are really very, very fast. And uh, now, normally, if you, can, if, you, if you buy these, they are made by the company Victor. I don't do any advertisement for them, but I haven't found another, uh, another company wh which produces it. Uh, and it normally comes with a red ball, and the red ball is a little bit slower. Maybe it is a little bit easier, but uh, the yellow ball, it is very fast. Girls, are you doing okay? <laughs> okay, th thanks for showing. Uh, you, you, you made a good job, that was fine. So, thank you. So, thank you, we've got another session then. Yeah, please drink something. Was it difficult? Is it the first time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good job. So whenever I start to work with these things, normally I don't have an audience for my goalkeepers because it, is, it sometimes really takes some time and it also depends uh, what history they have. If they have uh, table tennis or tennis history or badminton history, uh, they perform it much, much easier. Uh, but what I want to force them is I want to give them a new idea and use the technique from the goal, especially from the backcourt position. So this was, uh, these were three ideas uh, of my first session. Do you have any questions? Normally, I have uh, goalkeeper training once a week. This is always on a Monday, because my head coach says uh, it must not be a Friday, because then he just do, does the tactical things. And he also thinks uh, Thursday is too close to the game, because usually uh, in first league uh, in Austria, we play on uh, Saturdays mostly, and sometimes also on Friday. If it is a Friday, then he definitely wants it on Monday. And if it is a Saturday game day, then uh, I am the goalkeeper training on Tuesday. In the preparation period, I always uh, go together and have a talk with the trainer staff, what are their main issues, what they are preparing. And my idea is uh, it is okay to keep the goalkeeper uh, in the preparation period with the team, but sometimes I work with them alone. Mostly when it comes to long runs especially, endurance runs, then I do uh, uh, separated training with them. But normally once a week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, it depends on which preparation period it is. Um, and okay, there, there is another, let's call it session for me personally, because I'm responsible for the statistics. This is one of my major tasks in the class, uh, in, in the club. Uh, and I evaluate the statistics. Uh, I will show you tomorrow uh, how I do that because uh, it is uh, 2016 that I finished my master coach uh, education and this was also my topic, statistics in goalkeeping. And what I do is I use the statistics for my goalkeeping uh, for information for the defense 
and also for the goalkeepers. So when I, whenever I evaluate that we got too many uh, shots from the backcourt position, I use that in the next training and immediately use it for the training process. Because I think uh, what I watch in the handball scenery is that everybody does statistics, but I don't always know what they are using it for. So me, for example, when I'm a head coach, I could not do statistics ever because I'm much too focused on the substitution and on the coaching. When I'm an assistant coach, I don't have a problem to do the statistics because the major responsibility has my, my head coach. And also something very important, and I talk about it tomorrow in the theory sessions a little bit longer. When I'm the goalkeeper, I don't, uh, goalkeeper coach, I don't sit on the bench. I sit where you sit in the audience, because there I see more. I sometimes have the problem that when I sit on the bench, I don't see everything. And what I do is, I, uh, there is always in the break some time for feedback, and if the coach wants something, and he go, comes out because uh, the, in our arena, in our, in our arena, because I am responsible for the home games, uh, there is the audience here and the coach comes from the other side and we always have eye contact and if he wants something, he gives me a sign and I come down to the locker room and then we talk. If he is not sure, for example, about the substitution or uh, if he wants to talk about the defense system. So these are the three uh, focuses of my job. Yeah, okay. Thanks for listening. <laughs>